hello, Job up here from past the recording. And this is indeed not the first potion cannon. <clears throat> After recording, I went to YouTube and searched up Minecraft potion cannon, and I managed to find two, desi two designs, one using TNT but very differently to how mine uses, and one using slime blocks. And to say it, you tell Lisa, this is not inspired by anyone's design, since I didn't even know this existed before starting to record. So every time I will be saying that the first, it means basically the third in total, or a second TNT based potion cannon. So yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Hello, my name is Bob, and today I'm gonna show you what the heck this thing here does and how to build it. Well, that last one kinda. <clears throat> Firstly, let's say what it is. You probably know here if you clicked in the video, but this is a potion cannon. Something I have never seen to be done before, and it definitely has room for improvement. But this is the earliest design. And right now we'll have to reset the redstone timers, thing you have to do after every use. Okay. And where are all the potions? Ah. Weather clear and it's still day. And look at that range. All the way to here consistently. And I am currently using Lingering potions of instant harming to And imagine this being your base uh, being bombed by lingering potions of instant harming This would be pretty scary if this would be my base. <laughs> Just lingering potions falling s straight from the sky. This actually makes the dragon's breath finally useful. It's not even rendering. And my render distance is... 12 chunks. And... 12 chun chunks, it can shoot, shoot up to a range of a 12 chunks. And it has eaten through all of the potions. So, because this thing eats a lot of potions, since I just before starting to record refilled every single of these double chests with these. And let me show you how much they deal. Oh wait, not yet. 
fast went away let me show you how deadly they are if there is a big cloud of them like you don't even know what hit you before you're dead Now, where is all this stuff? Uh, where is all the stuff? Oh, there. Now, I actually have one of the key components built separately, the TNT mechanism. So, as you can see how this works, it's actually a little different here. So, let's, let's do the thing also here. And it's just because of pulse length. And there is definitely not a second channel video coming about a take two that I had, or take one, because this is definitely not take two. Because I messed up the reset on the first take. Okay, that is what happened, but I'm not used to using this. So now it's exactly how it's there, just and I have to modify this here just because of pulse lands. Oh my god, it rains often. Uh, so, yeah, let's show how this works. Oh yeah, I have to... All of these dispensers activated... ...to do that. So, there was 10 TNT there. And with the power of 10 TNT... I'm able to shoot 12 chunks away. <laughs> but as you saw, it eats a lot of TNT. And the best result I was able to find on how it works was. Getting two of these gaps. Oh yeah, let's put that away. Oh, like, just like that. Now let me fill all of this up. It's definitely not survival friendly since you would have to carry very much or like so many lingering potions with you to actually use this. Or of course you can always use splash potions but that cloud's gonna go away in a few seconds. 
You can also use combination of the two. That's also something I tested earlier. But actually, like, imagine what it would feel like. Just this. <laughs> like, you're using the default render distance. You can't see that, but it can kill you. You can't see this cannon, but you're in the range of it. And this is also for, like, servers that banned CNC cannons. It's not TNT cannon, it's a potion cannon. No. And... You can see that there is little more potions coming at once. And that is because of the... It has like two, like more chances to put those potions before... the TNT blows up, making it very much more deadly area, but also using, using potions a lot faster. And creating more waste. That's definitely something you want to be careful about. Yeah, you saw me filling this up. It's almost gone. And I actually didn't use that, that much time to create this. Oh, that wandering trader! <laughs> Let's see if it, it's gonna die. Wait, did... We're all out of potions. And simple reset later... It also needs a lot of TNT. And, yeah, you, sh you saw how to do this thing, and that's pretty much everything there is, except you want to put the drop uh, dispenser, or at least I have put on it, I'm not sure how practical this is, but three blocks away, or like... One, two, three. So that there is a three blocks between, like three block gap between the water and the dispenser. And then you want to make two chest systems. And little staircase here, three blocks tall also. And it starts one block below the dispenser. And there is redstone gonna be running through it straight to the observer. With another observer right next to it that can be pulled by sticky piston to deactivate the dispenser. You want to put a three... 
by two redstone repeater clock that powers this one repeater here that you want to put to be a four ticks long. Also all these repeaters for the results shown in the video must be four ticks long. Then you come here, you need to put this for pulse length and also put it to be four ticks so that it gives just a little more extra time to there. Then you want to do this a little bit more complicated but still very simple redstone clock of red repairs that is one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by two with one r a comparator, I believe it's that's name, yeah, redstone comparator to make the clock thing. That runs right to here to do all this stuff. Then there must be this thing. That's missing actually a, sh a sign. Two signs I forgot to. After this blew up I forgot to. Uh, to this kind of pool with this. Is its own water source block. <laughs> As you can see, so that the potions don't flood to here. That is actually something that might have happened while testing since now I realize that it was broken. Since it blew up on the previous take and I tried to repair it as good as I can. Now actually, let's see how much it affected the cannon. But yeah, if P uh, Anvil or TNT cannons, Anvil cannons, all that kind of stuff is banned on the server you play, they definitely have not thought about potion cannons since, for all I know, this is the first of its kind. I have never seen this being built ever. And this definitely has thing I could improve on it and will. Why there is storm every two seconds here? But yeah, I will have to make few improvements on this. This version is currently very impractical. But also I'm not a redstone genius. So if I won't mind if you spread the word about potion cannons to some more talented redstone builders that can improve the first prototype. So yeah, also here is a bubble column that is... I'm actually not sure how long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten blocks tall bubble column. <laughs> that perfect <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, it definitely did kind of affect the efficiency of this. Those not being there. That poor wandering trader is getting the potions again. But I'm not sure how practical this would actually be seen as with this design it has so little uh, potions being shoot and that it's pretty easy to dodge. Also seeing that partly the potions are being break broken in the bubble column there. But whatever you two do, don't go to that place in survival. Oh, the wandering trader died. Only the llama remains. That's one lucky llama, to say the least. It's surrounded by all of this poisonous cloud, but it's not there by it. But it's... it survives. <gasps> That's so close for the llama's death. You should run around aimless aimlessly. Does it know that that stuff hurts? And ammo's run out once again. So let's put this off. So, yeah, I think that that's it for the episode. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Comment if you like the design. Goodbye.